So now that we know the basics of loops, we're going to bring it back to our arrays discussion from before and figure out how we can simplify our lives. Now in the past, what we had to do is we generated, we created our array, and then we uh, added all the values in manually, and we would continue to go through everything on a manual process. So if we wanted to calculate the average or anything like that, it was a very difficult and menial task. So what we want to do now is simplify that whole process. So rather than manually entering all this data, I can get it from the user. I could do it very simply in just a couple lines of code. So I could do something like this. Let's say, for example, um, I want to read in all the marks. Now I know um, I can get the length of the marks from the from C sharp using marks.length. So I'm going to create my for loop for int i equals zero. And I'm going to keep looping as long as i is less than marks.length. So that's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which just happen to be all the index values of our marks array. Convenient that. i++. plus plus. So using this counter variable, I'm going to use this counter variable as the index for my array because of the way I set up the loop. It works out perfectly. So if I want to ask the user for the number, I can say, okay, console.writeLine, please, oops, please enter the mark. Oops. And now I can just read that in, console, oops, marks, bracket i, because that is the current index that I'm looking at. So the first iteration through the loop, i is going to have the value 0. Second iteration, i is going to have the value 1, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to assign this to whatever the user types in, but I'm going to have to convert it. I don't know why I put that there. Console.readLine. Now that will read in all of the marks from the user. Now I haven't done anything with them yet, but I can. So let's say, for example, as in the previous one, I want to calculate the average of the students. So I better create two more variables, a sum and an average, double sum, let's set that equal to zero, and double average, set that one equal to zero as well. How do I calculate the sum? Well, I have to go through the whole process and add them up one at a time again. So I could say something like this, sum is equal to marks at uh, zero, plus marks at 1, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to do that. We're going to simplify our lives using loops once again. And the reason why we do this is because what if for by any chance we decide we don't want that to be 5 anymore? What if we want it to be 500? If I change that to a 500, the good news is I don't have to change a single spec of code anywhere else as long as I was smart about the way I wrote it, such as using marks.length here and not the value 5. Um, and as you'll see, what I'll do in a few seconds with the rest of the code. So, again, we're going to repeat this process. So we're going to have another for loop. Int i. I can reuse the value, I can reuse the variable name i because that variable only had the scope of that for loop. So it's now open again for use. So I could say i is less than marks.length. Again, i plus plus. Now inside of here, I'm just going to add to the sum variable. Sum is equal to sum plus, well, this is where we use our marks array, marks. But what index do we use? Again, we set up the counter variable to mimic our index values of our array. So I just say marks at i. And there we go. That added up all the sum three lines of code. Yes, it is a few more lines of code, but it's much more simple to read. And I don't ever have to modify this. So again, if I pop this up to 500, I would not have to change any code here at all. It would still work perfectly. And then finally, we need to calculate the average. Average is equal to sum divided by marks dot length. So this code is actually set up so it doesn't matter what or how big the array is, the code will always work perfectly correct. So this is how we work with arrays and loops. Now we could do the exact same thing to use a loop to display all the elements of an array if we wanted to. Um, it depends on what you're doing. So say for example you had a class list of names. Maybe you wanted to display all those names on the screen. You could simply just do the same type of for loop 
but then in your console.write line you're just going to display the names and then the index uh, which would normally be the counter variable of your loop so the counter variable is pulling double duty on this one not only is it counting the number of iterations of the loop but it's also acting as the index of our element or the index of our array so that is how we handle looping arrays